Hello, hello. We are here today with uh, our good friend, Professor Mervyn Singer from the University College of London. Hello, Mervyn. Uh, of course, Mervyn is well known uh, in the field of intensive care and other fields. And uh, we'll speak primarily about sepsis, I guess. And, uh, Mervyn, I, I would like to ask a provocative question. Uh, if we think that antibiotics work in severe infections, we should give them really as soon as possible, right? Well, uh, I suppose, thank you, John. That's uh, the theory, but the, uh, the reality in terms of the published literature doesn't actually reflect that. So, you know, there are so many confounders, you know, when the patient comes into hospital, they may have been ill for hours, days, or even weeks with an infection. So just to believe that the clock starts after they've entered the doors of the hospital or the doctor makes the diagnosis of possible infection. But they may get to the hospital when they are worse, when they become septic. So it may still be a sepsis of relatively recent onset, right? Yeah. So again, to my way of thinking, and again, the way the literature reads is if you have a very sick patient, they're in septic shock, you need to react quickly, just like somebody bleeding to death. If they've got hemorrhagic shock, you're not going to wait, you know, an hour for a full cross match. You're going to react promptly. And yeah. I think the same analogy can be given to a septic patient. Clearly, if they're very ill or they're deteriorating very rapidly, you need to react. But the literature shows that for the vast majority of septic patients who are unwell but not moribund very critically ill you've got a bit more time to try and work out have they really got an infection you know many so, yeah would you be willing to do a prospective rct randomized control trial on um, on these patients who are septic but not in septic shock um it would be a lovely trial to do. I don't think this is going to be the problem. We were discussing this actually a few weeks ago. Would there be the equipoise or the fear? Because I think, unfortunately, um, there's been a lot of, uh, for want of a better word, propaganda, early antibiotics save lives, etc. So it becomes very yeah. hard to... Yeah, people believe in it. Medical but, legal, mm. medical legal dogma, all of these other issues, but clearly that's what needs to be done. I think but, one of the yeah. things that's helping, if I can come on to that, is that there are now position statements from the American Infectious Disease yeah. Society of America, the American College of Emergency Physicians, all have recently come out with statements saying you don't need to rush to give antibiotics in the first hour unless the patient's very ill. So, yeah, well, we'll speak in just a second of the, uh, the, the first hour concept, but um, uh, I, I wanted to, to add those who advocate the very early administration of antibiotics say that you can still stop it after, well, after one hour or two or three if you realize that this was not necessary and then it would not harm to give one dose of antibiotics. What do you think? I think the reality, again, looking at human factors, once they've started, is actually doctors find it difficult to stop. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, there's this mentality, oh, well, let's finish off a course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My, my worry is, it's, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen it, Jean-Louis, and everyone listening to this will have seen it, that often a patient may be pigeonholed as, oh, they're septic, and then the clinician's brain switches off and they don't think, well, could this be another non-infectious pathology that could Absolutely. And of course, we are concerned about the emergence of resistant organisms, right? We don't want to overuse the, uh, the antibiotics, right? Yeah, no, 100%. You know, we, we know from the ears, epidemiological yeah. studies that it's, you know, year on year on year, it's sweeping up from south and east europe and it's moving ever yeah. northwards and you know yeah sure big, big, big now big problems 
there is this one hour concept uh, do do you like this 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 one hour time limit in a way no because i personally i think we need to look more at the patient and be patient specific so it needs to be much more predicated on severity and trajectory so the reaction time of the clinician needs to be commensurate with the patient in front of him or her but then people could say mervin um we need to measure what we do and yeah. uh, if we want to compare our um, strategies and uh, and the quality of care in the various institutions so how how would you do that well i'll go back 15 years uh, in the united states they had a a quality uh, program and uh, obviously uh, there was a sort of uh, financial uh, penalties or incentivization depending on which way you look at to give antibiotics within four hours of presumption of a chest infection or new yeah, yeah 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 that got abandoned because they realized all it was doing was encouraging doctors to over prescribe antibiotics and they found there was no outcome benefit yeah I'm afraid we agree. <laughs> What do you think about this these bundles then? Not only the antibiotics but you know fluid vasopressors lactate etc in one hour. Again I I think you and I um, have sort of pronounced our views on this uh, more than once at meetings. It's again it, you're trying to pigeonhole force patients to get an identical treatment regimen when at the end of the day patients are different and we yeah. have that's our treatment to yeah. the patient so giving 30 mils per kilo it comes out yeah. of nowhere doesn't make sense and they may need 10 mils they may need 40 mils but the only way you know is to give a challenge look at the response give another challenge etc but you're not mandated to give a huge amount of fluid 80 kilo person 30 mils per kilo is 2.4 liters in an hour so yeah, yeah yeah but but the the timing for some things is relatively long because you are supposed to start fluid administration within one hour but i would argue that you would have five minutes to start fluid administration likewise to measure lactate you don't need to you know have one hour to measure lactate levels or to correct hypotension right yeah. I, i think Again, there's this sort of fixation with looking at the clock. Um, yeah. And again, there should be a sort of automatic brainstem mode. Right, you've got a sick patient. They need ABC. They need a diagnosis. Um, they need stabilization. And, you know, all of the, you know, when you decide to do an X-ray or a CT scan or a lactate measurement or use an ease, that all is a bundle that all comes together mm -hmm. so nobody's disagreeing with the fact that all of these things need to be done as part of good practice but to mandate they need 30 mils per kilo why yeah There's yeah no sure space for it what about the source control do you think there should be some time limit or how would you what would be your advice on this again it's when you look at the literature you know there's no absolute oh you've got to get in there within an hour or two you know i've been looking at the literature recently on this and there's not very very strong data i think the concept is you know clearly if you've got pus or a perforation or whatever the antibiotics aren't going to be particularly effective you've got to treat the problem yeah but clearly you need to get the patient fit enough to be in a state to have the major surgical operation Yep. So again, it's a balancing act of that patient in front of you. You need to try and get hemodynamic stabilization, electrolytes, fluid, etc. Then get their operation done. So you shouldn't delay the operation, but on the other hand, you shouldn't rush. Absolutely, and we need to individualize our therapies. I think that's the main message. Yeah, one hundred percent. Many thanks, my good friend. It was very informative. Very nice talking to you as always. Grand plaisir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.